Bump it, that's you. Let's gap, yes. That's you. Switch it, switch it, switch it. No, get out of there. Look where the back is now. This ain't a walkthrough. Do you guys understand me? We're just jogging around that first three plays. All right? That ain't what we are. Okay? We're giving up big... I didn't even see any rush from you on the first one. We took like two steps and popped. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we got to be running around. Got me? Did you see the Bruin? Yeah. All right, let's go. Got it? Rest for a good defense, I think, number one, is having aggressive kids, you know, who can run, who like to hit, and who are smart football players, you know, because I think, uh, you know, probably the problems you see out there, like you need the athletic attributes to be a, you know, good football player and a good defensive player, but I also think you need some mental attributes too because, you know, especially with today's game becoming so wide open, so many different formational things, so many things that offense does, that sometimes there has to be some adjustments that are made you know, during the course of the game or on the fly or by formation to, to help solve some problems that you may be facing. You know, I think offenses have gotten really sophisticated as far as having multiple answers out of their formations as opposed to one or two. So we need multiple answers out of those situations too. So, and the players need to be able to handle those adjustments. You know, at the same point in time. So I think that's one of the biggest things in today's game is, is just the, you know, the mental aspect too, you know, that the players face week in, week out. Make sure, I make sure you can make that play, just be in control, you know what I'm saying? Stay up. I know, that's good. Oh, and just touch the hip. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, if you can't thud it, touch the hip. Yeah. Tackle you like that's this. Yeah. yeah, get your feet set. And we gotta cover that guy. Yes, you know what I mean? You guys gotta cover those, hey, they're running those, Johnny. We run those thin posts when we're a man. Know what you're seeing now, you know what I mean? Make an adjustment. Uh, we're gonna be aggressive, you know, and I think we have to be aggressive with our calls. You know, we have to be multiple with what we're doing. Uh, I don't think we can sit in, you know, one front or, you know, one or two coverages for an entire game and expect to win. You know, we have to be able to change things up, disguise, you know, be flexible within our system so we can adjust easily to what we're facing and, uh, and, and make the package simple that allows the kids to play fast and run because you know at the end of the day we don't want them thinking because if they're thinking they're not going to play as fast as they should play and you know when we have enough flexibility in our system you know I think we have enough to confuse offenses, change things up, give different looks, attack different areas to help us solve problems and, and help our players to play fast because there's not a whole lot of thought process on their part either sometimes. Oh, yeah! That's it! Twos, twos, twos! Let's go, twos! Hey, did you hear a whistle on the first one? Is there a whistle? I understand? That's all that there is. Whistle and no whistle. Here we go, here we go. Yeah. He was wondering why he called me Nikki. I was like, this is up north, like Delaware, Jersey, all that. He called people Nikki up there. I guess. I think he just thinks you're a girl. Hey, come on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I think coach is coaching. I think in the last five or six years, I think you see changes. I think it's just, you know, along, same along society. You know, I don't think it has anything to do with different parts of the country or anything like that. There's, I think it's just, uh, you know, different types of kids, different types of backgrounds, you know, different things. But at the end of the day, I still think, you know, the coaching part and the, co and the kids needing coaching hasn't changed. I think they need leadership. I think they need role models. I think they need structure. I think they need discipline. You know, at times, I think in this, in today's day and age, maybe a little bit more than it was, you know, five, even 10 years ago. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, always looking for the same things. I think you're looking for the kids who desire, you know, that structure and the discipline that they want in their lives, because those, are, at the end of the day, those are the kids that are going to be successful. Yeah, once. He would, no, the corner, if we can get the corner over, fine, but I said if he gets caught, just he takes his spot. It's that easy. Nice job! Nice job! Nice job! Nice job! I think my oldest has realized it. I'm not so sure sometimes my youngest has realized it, you know, but, and I think it's around that seven, eight-year-old age, you know, I think they start to realize that, you know, you know, I go to an office, but my office is a little different than most people's offices. And, you know, there's a lot of other, you know, as you know, my youngest daughter says, a lot of football boys, they hang around, you know. So I'm either coming over here to, to work with the football boys or I'm trying to find football boys. And, and I think it's been a pretty unique experience for me because I've gotten a chance to see it with an older child and a younger child. And I see the younger 
starting to really like um, being around the game, being around football, and my and seeing how my oldest has really gotten to the point where she even told me that, she, that she's going to rule out any college that she would go to that didn't have football. So it's, it's become that important part of her life too. That's it. Nice job. Hey, good communication. You know what I mean? Like when we're in black. Because we're getting too wide sometimes. You know how like that one's coming under? Yeah, yeah. yeah, like we're getting too wide or like there's stuff sneaking behind us. You know what I mean? So as you jam it, just get back. Just, you know, and especially when you get that whip route, okay, because if that two's coming in, bang, and you see it whip out straight back because you got to curl right behind it. It's just one of those things you got to know. Hey, stand up, stand up, stand up. Don't let them know. Don't let, ever let that other sideline know you're tired. I think first and foremost is competition. You know, I think you grow up all your life in sports, you know, particularly football, and, you know, it's a competitive game. I think, you know, at times it may be the most physically demanding game that's out there, you know, so you, there's a, a physical competitiveness to it as, a, as well as a mental competitive part, you know, because there's always that X and O part where you're trying to sort of outthink and outdo uh, the other guy. But at the same point in time, there's a big physical part. Physical battles have to be won. So, you know, that, that part of the competitiveness being twofold, I think, really draws, you know, somebody to the game and, you know, keeps you in the game. It's, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to, I've been around football since I was seven years old, you know, playing as a little kid. And, uh, you know, you get to your last game of your senior year and you're like, this is over, this is over. You're never going to, you know, have that again. But as a coach, you're able to have that again. Now you don't get to go out there and actually physically play the game, but you're around people who want to play the game, you're around the game, and, and those are the important things. And I think the other thing is you, you're surrounded by people who have the same likes and dislikes as you and have the same type of competitiveness and the same type of drive because it takes a special person to play this game. It's not the easiest game in the world because of the physical part to it. You know, it's not a game for everybody, and, and that's not a bad thing. It's just what it is. And, and when you're able to surround yourself with people who are like you on a daily basis, you know, you really don't look at it as work. You know, you look at it as, you know, you're going, you're going into an office, but you're going to be with players and coaches and support people who earn the same interests as, as you have. And, and you're not going to work. You're going to some place that you love, and you're doing something you love to do. And, you know, that's really teach the game of football and, and teach like the values that football can give them, to, you know, in, in their lives. Okay, and the, and the types of commitments and discipline that, you know, it's going to need to have a family and have jobs and have children later on in their lives.